Hello again, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you with another Legends of Rune Terra deck guide. In this video, I'm going to go over the patch 1.12 version of discard aggro. In this video, we will cover the deck summary, the general strategy and tips of the deck, and a mulligan guide so you yourself can take this video, all the knowledge that you get from it, take it to your games, climb, grow, whatever it is that you need to do. If you find this video useful, consider subscribing. I make in-depth Rune Terra content for you guys so you yourself can become a Rune Terra pro. Have a fantastic day. Before we proceed to the deck summary, for the more veteran or familiar players with discard aggro, I'm going to talk about a couple of cards, a uh, couple of cards, sorry, in particular right now. I want to bring up Poro Cannon for a second. This is probably the most recent addition to the deck. Basically, Poro Cannon is very effective against Tom, Ken uh, Tom Kenshin's Soroka. The ability to go literally under them is fantastic, and the you're not really able to push that damage because of the units that are on the field. You can't really trade effectively, so the best way to do this is to play Poro Cannon alongside the other card I'm going to talk about in co conjunction with this. It's going to be Arena Bellcaster. Now, Arena Bellcaster was showing up a little while ago. It's not the most recent addition, but it is one that's finding its home here, mostly in replacement of Mystic Shot. Mystic Shot is used to push two damage all the time. Sometimes you get that great value with it that Arena Bellcaster can't, but in general, Bellcaster is a much more uh, strong, edgy fit for this deck that literally can turn your Mystic Shot into more damage in the right matchups. There's some matchups where Mystic Shot is better, but in general, Arena Bellcaster is an absolute fantastic card right now and just really gives this deck more of an edge in the general, metal ga uh, general meta game. You'll find the link to my deck list and deck code down in the description below. Alternatively, there is also going to be some timestamps there so that if you may have already seen plenty of my deck guides before and you're looking for some specific information, hopefully those timestamps will help you. But we're going to go through a list for some more newer players. Uh, so basically, as the list goes, we have uh, at the moment two copies of Augmented Experimenter. This is one of the cards that has been trimmed down a little bit to fit in some other cards. I don't mind three augmented experimenters. Actually, I was still running three augmented. I've thrown in one University of Piltover. This is probably not the most competitive card, I understand, but I kind of like the idea of having one of these here, strictly for certain matchups where discard aggro isn't going to have that edge, but they're not going to kill us that fast. We can sometimes get a cheeky University of Piltover off. I would definitely not run any more than one of this card. Three Jinx is a pretty staple for the deck. At the moment, we're bumping up Crowd Favorite. Crowd Favorite stonks are kind of uh, rising. Just because, like, going more wide, we're running Arena Battlecaster, Poro Cannons. Crowd Favorite definitely is finding a suitable home and it helps you for pushing and pushing faster. This deck is turned into a little bit of, like, slightly control to becoming more of a unit based deck. It's probably one of the only decks that can truly go for the unit strategy and not be punished. Obviously, we do have some bad matchups in general. But yeah, crowd favorite, definitely a fantastic card. And we're bumping up the stonks on it. Uh, Vision times three for, you know, it's pretty standard reasons. This card synergy makes a fantastic card here. I uh, get excited. It's definitely going to be three of right now. Super good push. Great in the mirror. It's just a fantastic card. There's not much to talk about there. Uh, Draven times three. We have the three house spiders still. House spider still just makes an ultimate uh, card choice here. For a moment, I considered maybe taking out house spider. I think you're probably shooting yourself in the foot, and I think I would have shot myself in the foot. House Spider is a fantastic card still. Flame Chompers times three, Discard Synergy, Arena Battlecaster times three. Zonai Urchin is absolutely insane for activating this deck. Uh, just two Rummages at the moment. Only two. It um it finds its best value when you find like the single copies of it throughout the game. Sometimes you'll find multiple of these, and it feels kind of very bad, but yeah. Rummage at two just feels fantastic right now. Uh, three Drury Rig. Now, some people are running Triple Draven's biggest fan. I'm not in agreement with that. I think two is just fine. Like, I get the idea of finding Draven on curve is fantastic, which it is, but you've got five chances here. Five chances out of 30, uh, 40 cards is pretty reasonable enough to me. You'll most likely hit either Draven's biggest fan or Draven. Yeah, I think two Draven's biggest fan is absolutely fine. This is probably one of the other newer cards that has been recently popping up, but it's not one or like a uh, point out directly as anything too special. And of course, three Poro Cannon wraps up the list. So the deck strategy is generally pretty simple. I mean, you're looking to activate Jinx, you're looking to flip Jinx and start spamming those rockets. Uh, so besides that, you do just kind of, or can and or, just play a super aggressive strategy. Like throughout your mulligan, you'll be looking for things to discard as well as playing some early cheap minions. And you'll just start to flood the board and really just punish your opponent for like, not doing a lot, especially against solo control decks. This is just a, a vibe, a vibe. At the moment, we're actually facing a War Mother deck, so we are forced into playing 
you know, pretty loose. I don't try and play around too many cards, and I just focus on what I want to do, less about what my opponent might do. But besides that, play on curve, you hit your Draven on turn 3 a lot of the time, you start gathering spinning axes, eventually finding Jinx, flipping her on curve. By the way, to flip her, you need to discard your entire hand after she's played. Whether or not, like, you play her after you discard your hand or vice versa. But once she flips, she starts destroying cards and you start getting rockets, discarding your hand. There's, like, a lot of synergy in this deck. And, like, being able to sometimes burst speed out units on for open attacks is fantastic with all the discard synergy. And Visions is really nuts for doing that as well and activating that. Like, you see here, for example, just, like, the Flame Chompers is insane for, like, dragging units aside and just getting rid of chump blockers. This deck does a lot of things. It does a fantastic amount of things. Then you play a crowd favorite on curve with all your units on board. Of course, my opponent may have had Avalanche, but, you know, I didn't, I couldn't afford to play around it really. So luckily enough that he didn't. But in most matchups where they're not hitting Avalanche on curve, like your units aren't going to be heavily contested. Uh, against Bilgewater Burn, it's sometimes like a little bit of like a 50-50, but you still have a pretty decent shot against them. I wouldn't say it's super unfavored against Bilgewater Burn, unless they hit like two to three uh, make it rains in a game, makes it a little bit awkward. But yeah, you kind of want to look to not lose your board too quickly because you're looking for those crowd favorites on curve two if you don't hit Jinx. Just you have to like play with what kind of hand you have. I think that's one of the biggest things with this deck which makes it hard to pilot. Like you've got to look at your hand state and you've got to kind of go, right, what's the strategy of this game? Because it kind of changes a lot. Sometimes you're playing crowd favorite on curve and you might even have Jinx in hand. I would say that maybe going for the crowd favorite play is more good. Or maybe your opponent's going to have removal at certain points of the game, so you need to try and flip Jinx at a certain point. There's lots of cute aspects to it that you've just got to be super mindful of. Otherwise, you're going to make a lot of misplays, and this deck kind of is easy to make misplays on. But yeah, your opponent's going to remove their stuff in the solo matchups. Your board's going to kind of get lost, so you look for Jinx to finish against uh, more greedier decks like Lee Sin. You basically just go wide against them, and they just can't do a tremendous amount. And it's all about kind of making snap decisions here and there. So to, to summarize all that, just be very mindful of what you're playing. Keep your eyes out too. Uh, Jinx's rocket does cost mana. So be careful like not to like uh, make a misplay where you try and go all in to flip Jinx to get the rocket. And then you don't have enough mana to play it anyway. Sometimes you've also got to think about not flipping Jinx too. Because it might not be the right play to discard your hand if it's like quite uh, valuable. And like especially in the mirror matchup, you've got to be very mindful of when Jinx comes down. And, you know, sometimes double drawing Draven is going to grant you Whirling Death, which is really crazy. Yeah, just be very mindful and take your time and just kind of like throw out enough resources that make sense. And if sometimes you'll have a hand that just wants you to go all in very early and that's fantastic. And don't even, don't even worry about what's in your hand. Uh, be mindful of discarding Jinxes too and think about the matchup because sometimes you need the Jinx. But if your hands, as I said, pretty aggressive, you can look for those maybe like discarding higher value cards to go for a more powerful uh, play. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. And if you have any further questions about, you know, the deck summary, the deck strategy, just feel free to jump down in the comments. Like seriously, guys, I'm like literally always there responding as much as I can. But uh, we'll talk about the Mulligan Guide now. because I think that's like one of the most important uh, aspects of this deck. Mulligan Guide, Mulligan Guide, guys. So in most matchups, it's generally going to look the same. There's maybe a few situations against like in the mirror or against like very slow decks where you want to be like taking things a bit different. I will say, just in general, against the faster decks, keep the faster cards. Against the slower decks, you want to be keeping Jinx a lot. And in, specifically in the mirror matchup, it's really important that you find Jinx. It's really important that you flip Jinx. So you've got to keep Jinx. That's my quick tip right there. Keeping Jinx sometimes is a fantastic play. But without further ado, I want to talk about one thing specifically in this mulligan. Draven's Biggest Fan and Draven. If you have the one drop Draven's Biggest Fan as well as Draven in the opening hand, you actually just want to keep Draven a lot of the time and put the Draven's Biggest Fan back into your deck because that's generally not the best card to have. Throughout the early game in your hand, you basically want to be like trying to hit those Zornites, hitting those Jury Rigs, hitting those Flame Chompers and Porokans, fantastic as well. Now, depending on the matchup, what's going to happen sometimes is you're going to end up getting given a hand that's like Draven, Jinx, House Spider, and Zornite, for example. Now, at this point, uh, you're pretty safe to keep the House Spider a lot of the time, but Zornite's not going to be the best keep. You really want to be hitting stuff to discard. You want to be min-maxing what you discard. I find sometimes keeping discard fodder to be the play, as long as we have discarding cards alongside it. So a good example is like Zornite and Drury Rig in the opening hand is absolutely fantastic. You never think twice about getting rid of that. 
it's pretty simple really uh, oftentimes late as of recently i'm finding rummage not to be the most fantastic card to keep so never keep rummage in your opening hand you ideally want to hit units as well as a curve and like poro cannon's absolutely fantastic as well uh, but outside of that in the solo matchups you'll basically always want to keep jinx and kind of like look this plan it out because sometimes you can plan it out in a sense where all right I have Jinx alongside these discard things. I could probably play Jinx on turn four and flip her. Just think about what's going to happen throughout the next few turns and what your chances are of flipping her. Keep a curve's fine. You hit your curve. Keeping Draven's fine. Keeping Zornite. If as long as you're curving out, that's what I'm trying to say here. You'll never keep the expensive cards, nor will you keep Crowd Favorite most of the time. I don't think Crowd Favorite ultimately ever makes a pick in your opening hand. I think it always gets tossed back into your deck. Because chances are you're going to find one on curve with like all the cycle in this deck. Alternatively, uh, you'll probably look to be like discarding these if you keep them in your opening hand anyway. So you just don't. Uh, Visions, unironically, isn't usually the best keep either. So I don't usually find reasons to ever be keeping this. So neither should you. You might have a pretty crazy hand, but it's pretty unlikely that you'll have a hand that is like Zornite Jury Rig into like Zornite Jury Rig. Like there weren't, you won't ever have enough cards in the opening hand that makes sense to justify keeping visions. So do not keep visions. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty simple, guys. You really look for the curve against the faster decks and against the solid decks. You'll definitely want to be keeping Jinx. That is like one of the biggest tips I could ever recommend for this deck. Hopefully, this Mulligan guide makes sense. Hopefully, this entire video made sense. So I'm not going to have any gameplay for you guys today, but if you would like to see some gameplay, I will probably be posting gameplay throughout the near future on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe, as I mentioned. Alternatively, if you're keen to come see some gameplay, you know, you might catch me playing that deck over on my Twitch channel. I'll let the pop-up go there. Links in the description. Don't forget to follow. Um, if you found any of this information useful as well, please leave a like. It helps me out a lot. You guys don't understand. Anyway, have a fantastic day. Good luck on ladder, and I'll see you in the finals.